Hello, uh, please let this serve as a quick reference guide for the Active Inspire software. Hopefully, whether you are a teacher or a student watching this, it will help you out. Just kind of navigate through the software, uh, you know, in a pretty quick fashion. First thing you're going to need to do is obviously to launch uh, the Active Inspire software. Here is what the icon looks like. I'm just going to double click Active Inspire. And this is, this is the, uh, the splash screen that will pop up. I'll kind of navigate you through some ins and outs of it and um, hopefully this will get you started on the, on the right foot. As you launch Active Inspire, the first thing that's going to pop up is actually going to be what's called the dashboard. This is basically the main hub for all the most recent flip charts you've created or um, ones where you can actually open relatively quickly or just creating one from scratch pretty quickly. And as I said the word flip chart, just know that that refers to the name of the document that you create when you're in the software. Kind of like when we're in Microsoft Word, we call that a Word document. When, we're, when you're in Active Inspire, it's actually called a flip chart. So as you can see, uh, this is the dashboard. If you're all set with that and you have a blank one, a uh, blank flip chart in the background, just click close. And that is how you get into a blank page, a blank flip chart. So now you're able to work with your document. First thing I'm going to do is talk to you about the tools that are available to you. You can see the toolbox here in, my, in the middle of the screen. And this toolbox is com it compiled with a generic default list of tools. Now, the tools that are available to you, I'm going to talk, talk you through right now. The very first thing you have to understand is how to get to and from um, pages within your flip chart. And that's these arrows right here. The left arrow is the previous. The right area, area is the next page. So if you just click through those, that's how you get to and from pages. You can see a color palette in the middle of your uh, toolbox here. This gives you a range of colors you can choose from if you'd like more colors. Just right click on the palette and you can see more colors populate as well as a color wheel being available to you to select different colors from as well as a color picker if you so choose. So that's what those are. You probably already figured that one out on your own. The three dots below here are the pen width. They're just default choices. If you'd like the pen width larger or smaller, you just kind of drag this, this slider right here. Um, obviously to the right will be the largest pen width and to the left will be the smallest pen width. The main tool in the toolbox is the default tool. That's what I have selected right now. It's the select tool. It allows you to select items and manipulate items once you have them. Probably if you're at the board presenting, one of the most important tools would be the pen tool. I'm going to click on the pen, I'm going to click a color, and I'm going to write on the board. And it acts just like you think it would. It will write wherever you are writing, and it will write actually just like you were writing on a sheet of paper. And again, you can change the color very easy by clicking on the color. If you want the width to be bigger, here's an example how to adjust the pen width. And if you want to go back, make sure you just take it back to the pen size you want it to. There's a highlighter right next to the pen. It will highlight anything you have on your screen, okay? exactly like you would normally have, think about when you're using a highlighter on a sheet of paper. The eraser will erase whatever is on your screen. The paint bucket will turn the back or gives you the ability to actually turn the background or some type of um, image that's enclosed to a different color. So if I want my background, let's say, to be whatever, Carolina blue, let's say, I'm going to click the paint bucket, click the color I want it to be, and click on the screen, and that will change the background to that color. If you want it white again, click on white, click on your screen, you will have that. There is a shape menu. If you'd like to see some more shapes available to place on your screen, click the shape menu. And on the right hand side, you can see you have the ability to import shapes, various shapes, um, onto your main screen. So let's say you want a, a triangle to be placed on your screen. You click the triangle, you click and hold on your screen with a left click. I'm clicking and holding left click, and I'm dragging to make a triangle. If I want a star, I will click a star. Let's say I wanted a different color. I'm going to go to the very top. There's a palette up here. If I want it green, I'm going to click green. And I'm going to click and drag again to put a star on my page. Another tool that might be of benefit to you would be the text tool. This will allow you to type something on your flip chart page. But I want a blank page here. I have a lot of stuff on my page one. I want a clean page. I'm going to click the right arrow, like I mentioned to you before. It will give you a blank page. If I click the text tool, you can see at the very top of the page, you have the, now have a menu that looks very familiar. It should look familiar um, as far as Microsoft Office goes. You have the ability to click on your page and type hello. Notice right now mine is italicized. It's in orange and it's underlined. Let's say I wanted black text 
and I don't want it italicized nor bolded nor underlined. You have to click in, double click to get into the text box, highlight it, and choose the color palette, choose black, and I'm just going to mark all of the options for bold, italicized, and underlined false. You now have the word hello on your screen. If you were to type a paragraph, you would do it the same exact way you would do it in Microsoft Word. You would just type and then click enter to get to the next line. The spray bottle is a really nice thing to be able to work with. Let's say you have some text on your screen that you typed and you have some annotations as well with the pen. If you click the spray bottle, it will give you the quick way of deleting all of those. Let's say you just want the scribbles to go away. Instead of using the eraser and taking up a lot of time, if you have a lot of annotations on your screen, you click the spray bottle and click clear annotations, the annotations will go away. If you click the spray bottle and click clear objects, notice just the text that I typed went away. Like all good all good programs, there is an undo and a redo. The undo is the uh, at the very bottom of the toolbox is the left arrow and the right or the arrow to the right um, going to the right side is actually the redo. So there's undo and there is redo. All right. Next phase.